You see, the problem with the basic WordPress login dashboard is it's very overwhelming, especially for your brand new clients. You've designed your website and this is what they get when they log in. Now, I don't think this is a great way of having a default dashboard. So in this video, we want to have a dashboard which has a much simpler layout and very, very easy to use. This is our custom dashboard for your Divi 5 websites. I'm gonna show you how to build this from scratch. So when you take a look at this, when you go to add a new page after logging in, and this could be your client's website, by the way, they can click here and straight away, you're going to go to a page where you can start off by adding your page title. I mean, how cool is that? Now, this is a totally different experience as compared to logging into this dashboard and then coming over here to pages and then clicking on add new. So this new experience here is really powerful and I highly recommend that once you create this template or this dashboard, you can use this on other websites as well, having a fantastic way of showcasing all your work. Now, before we get started, I have a DV5 mastery course. If you want to master DV5, this course has everything that you need for you to really know how DV5 works. Now, this will save you hours going on the internet and YouTube and trying to find out how you can work out DV5. As you know, DV4 and DV5 are miles apart. DV5 was built from the ground up. And this course pretty much gives you a head start when it comes to designing websites using DV5. This course is only $27. And once you purchase it, when I, when I add new modules, you don't have to pay extra. And also, if you don't, uh, so go ahead, buy it now. The link to that is in the video description below. So let's start by creating a brand new page. So I'm just gonna call this uh, my, my dashboard. But of course you can call yours dashboard or whatever it is that you want. Next, I'm gonna click on use Divi Builder because throughout this whole process, we're just gonna use the Divi Builder. All right, so let's start off by adding a single column. And in this column, we're going to have a heading and we're also going to have some paragraph text. But before I add the paragraph text, I just wanna go in and center this. I'm gonna come over here, texts, or in fact, heading text, and then I am going to center it. All right, so the next thing we need to add here is the uh, normal paragraph text. So I'm just gonna search for my text module here, hit enter, and then I'm gonna go in and paste my dummy text and center it. Okay, so here we're just gonna say welcome to my uh, welcome to my dashboard. The next thing we're gonna add is another row. So I'm gonna come over here, click on this new row, and in here we're going to have a group. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. So what I'm going to do uh, well ahead of time is I'm gonna go into the background of this section and add a very light gray. So I'm gonna come over here to section settings, go to background, and we are going to add a very light gray something like that. Okay, great. Next, I'm gonna come over here now into my group settings because this group is going to house everything that I need for my layout. So in here, I'm going to go in and add a background color and the color here is going to be white. Okay, like that. Next, I am going to give this a bit of padding. So I'm gonna come over here to design and then I'm gonna go to spacing. So let's go with three rem. So I want to do this all around top, bottom, left and right. Okay, great. The next step now is to add a border. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go with 0.4 rem, hit enter. And then I'm also going to give this a border radius. So I'm going to set this to one and then I'm going to choose a color and this is going to be a light gray. Okay like that for now. If I need to adjust it, I'll go in and adjust it. Okay, so the next step now is to add a blurb. I'm gonna go ahead and select that. Now, while we're here, the next uh, the next thing we need to do is to add our icon. So I'm gonna go in and first of all, remove all this text. And then I'm going to say on my image and icon here, I'm gonna delete that and then just say use icon. So I'm gonna search for my icon here. And what I need is a page or something that looks like a page. In fact, let's start with a post. So I'm gonna add that, but I want this over to the left. So I'm gonna come over here to layout. In fact, I don't need layout. I need to go to image and icon. And instead of having it uh, here on the top, I'm gonna align it to the left 
like that. All I have to do now is to set my size, which is going to be two rem. Yeah, I think two rem works. Okay, so this title now is going to be called blog posts. Okay, so now that we have that, I'm gonna click on this plus button. We're gonna add a divider. And then I'm going to continue on and I'm going to add a group. Now, the reason why I'm adding a group is because I'm going to add two links. So these links here are just text modules like that. And then I'm going to duplicate this like that. And now I need this side by side. So I'm going to go into my group settings, design, layout, and then I am going to set this to row. Okay. So now that I have this, I'm pretty much close to uh, completing my design here. So here I need to add text that says add new post. So I'm going to come over here. Over here on the next one, I'm going to say edit post. Okay, great. So now that we have these two, we want this side by side. So I'm going to click here on my group settings, go to design layout. Now notice how I'm using Flexbox uh, this time. I'm going to go to space between. And now we have add new post on one extreme end and edit post on the other extreme, which is fantastic. Now, what I need to do here is I need to give this a size because right now it's way too wide. So I'm going to click in here and then I am going to now go to sizing and set this to, let's say, 30 pixels or 30%. Hit enter. And now you can see I have a really good size for my information in here. So what I may want to do now is perhaps to go in and reduce, you know, this uh, spacing in here. So I'm going to click in here and then go to my group. Now what we need is the layout. So here in the flex box, I'm going to set this to, uh, let's try one rem. And then we're going to do the same for the vertical and hit enter. So you can see now the spacing is much, much better. Okay, so the question now is, what do we do with uh, this borderline here? So what we need to do is to make it lighter. So I'm gonna go in and go into the line and here on the color, I'm gonna set it as a light gray. So I'm just gonna set it to D8, D8, D8. So this needs to also match my border. So I'm gonna go into my group settings, border, and then I'm gonna go to my color here and let's see if our color matches. Okay, I don't think it's still dark enough. So let me increase it a little bit. Okay, so I think D8, D8, D8 works great. All right, so now that I have that, uh, I can now go in and adjust my links. So I'm gonna click here in my module settings. So what I need now is, let's first of all publish this page because I need to navigate away from this page. So what we're going to do is we're just going to come over here, hit exit. So the first link we need is to add a new post. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over posts and then I'm going to say add post. So here I need to right click and say copy link address. It's very, very important I do that. So back over here, I'm going to go into the first link, go into my content, and then I'm going to highlight this text which says add new post, click on this link here, and then I'm gonna paste it like that. So where this needs to start is where it says WP admin, okay? So this means that if you wanna use this template, it's going to work on pretty much any website. Okay, so I'm gonna say, okay. Now to make sure that that's a link, I am going to underline it by doing that. And what I may also want to do is to come over here to my design and then I'm going to go into text, make sure I come over here to the link and then add a link color. So usually, so I'm going to choose my link color and that's going to be, that's going to be it like that. So I'm pretty much happy with the link color. Next, I'm going to come over here to edit post and it's similar to what I did before. We're going to come over here to my old dashboard and then I'm gonna hover over posts, and then we need to. So I've done the same with edit post. So the next step now is to duplicate this so that I have uh, my other setting for my pages. So instead of saying blog posts here, 
I'm going to say pages. So I'm going to highlight that pages. And then over here on the links, I'm going to click here and this is going to be add new page. So back over here, I'm going to go to text, add new. And then instead of saying post, we're going to say page. Okay, great. Now we need the link. So again, I'm going to come back over here. We're going to hover over pages and then we're going to say add page. So I'm going to right click and we're going to say copy link address. And then back over here, we're going to make sure that we paste it in here. But this time around, we are going to change this because this is the page. So I'm going to say, okay. And now that's going to link. We're going to need one more. I'm going to duplicate this. And then in order for these to be in a single line, I'm going to go to my row settings, go to elements, and then go into the column design layout. And then we're going to change the direction like that. Now notice how this looks way, way, way much better now. So what I need to do finally here is to go into this one and we're going to call this media. Okay. So we're going to go to text and change this from pages to media like that. And then over here, we're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to refresh this and let's go to media. All right. So add media file and library. Okay. So let's just go to library. I'm going to copy that copy link address. And then we're going to come over here, go into the first one. And just like what I did before, you just want to go in and paste. Okay. So, and we also need to make sure that we have the WP, right? Click OK. So when you click here, it is going to upload. So I'm going to say add new image since this is media. Okay. But I'm sure you get the idea now. So once I have all this, you may also need to go in and style the, uh, the icon. So let's just change the icon here. We are going to say media and let's add this little icon here. So it's slightly different. Okay. So I think that's looking great. I am going to save this for now and I'm just going to do a quick preview and see if my links are working. So I'm going to click here on add new image. Let's see if that works. Sure enough, you can see it goes to my media library and then I can start off from there. Okay, so that's looking great. The next step now is to add even more information. Now, this is where you need to decide what you're going to have that is beneficial to your clients when they log in. So let's go ahead and add two columns. So in this column, we're going to add a heading like that. So this heading here, I'm just going to call this welcome or it can be get started. Okay. It doesn't really matter. And uh, let's set this to, is this a heading? Yes. So we are going to set this to heading three. Okay. And then I'm just going to duplicate this and drag it over here. Okay. So that one is going to be called support. There we go. Now, all I have to do is to stylize this because I want it to look pretty much similar to what I have here on the top. So I'm going to go into my row settings here and start off by adding a background color. So I'm going to go in here and add white. There we go. Next, I need to add some padding so I can have some breathing space around all my elements inside. So I'm going to go into spacing and this is going to be three rem. And I'm going to apply this both to the top and bottom, left and right. Okay, three rem. Okay, great. The next step now is to go to the border and set this to 0.4 rem. Hit enter. And you can see now I have my rounded corners. Now it's time to add our border. I'm going to set it to one pixel. And I'm also going to choose my border color. And this just needs to be a very light gray. Okay, I think that would work. Fantastic. So right now I can see things are not aligned. That is because I need to make sure my flex box is set correctly. So I'm going to go to row settings and then I'm going to go to layout. And right now I need to add space between. No, no, no. I mean the wrong thing. See, I'm in row. I need to be in column. So I'm going to go to elements and then I'm going to go to design layout. And then this time this will work. Boom. You see that? 
Now I have space around and everything looks much, much better. So this is where I get to add uh, my elements now. So I'm gonna say this plus button here, and this is going to be a video. So this is gonna be a welcome video. It can be a get started video. Pretty much it's up to you. Over here, we're going to also add another element and this time it's our contact. All right, so let's go ahead and add our contact form. And all you need to do now is to customize it by coming over here. You can add your email address and then you can also add a redirect link. So you can enable your redirects and then add your URL in here. So pretty much we have the bare bones of what we need to get our page up and running. The final thing is just to add a bit of padding. So I'm going to go into my section settings here, go to advanced attributes, and then I'm going to go to class. Now I'm using SiteCrafter for this, but in your case, you can go in and add your own uh, settings. It's pretty much okay. I just want to make sure that my padding is uh, responsive. So here I'm going to say SEC for section, and then I'm going to go with medium and I'm pretty much happy with that. Now I can hit save. Okay. So at this stage, uh, let's do a quick preview so we can see what it looks like. You see? that looks great so when they log in this is the page that they see but here's the thing the question now is okay when they log in how are they going to be redirected <laughs> right so we need to fix that in a moment in a moment but for now what we need to make sure is uh, is uh, working is these links so you need to test them out see what happens when you add a new page add a new image and so on and so forth now once all that is great you're pretty much good to go so what i need to do now is to save this layout so in your case if you want to use this over and over again you can just hit export and then you're going to say my dashboard and then export divi builder layout boom just like that now this option is where you can just drag and drop it now i discuss uh, how to use your layouts in the course, in the DV5 Mastery course. But if you want to save this to your library, then that's different. You want to save the whole section. I mean, the whole section, yes. You come over here, save to library. You give it a name. If you want to save it to your cloud, you can go ahead and give it a name, activate cloud. And of course, you have to log in to go into cloud, and then this will be saved in your cloud. But if you want to save it to your normal website, this is where you'd go, save this to your normal website, and pretty much you add it to the library and you're good to go. Export it from the library, and then you can always uh, use this on pretty much any website. Now, let's set this up so that when I log in, I go to this page called My Dashboard, which is this one right here, okay? So let's just get this preview away. Okay, so this is the URL that we need. All right, so now that I have that, I'm gonna hit uh, save and exit. And then we're gonna go back over here and let's go to appearance. No, we need to go to plugins, add plugin. So we need, a, we need a security plugin called Fluent Auth. Now this plugin here is really, really powerful. It both takes care of your security and also allows redirections. So I'm gonna click on install now and then activate. Now to set it up, I can either come over here to Fluent Auth Settings, click on Settings here. So what I normally do is apply recommended. That's very important. And then I want to go into Login Redirects. Now this is the part which I really, really like. I want to enable that. So now I'm going to add a default login redirect. Okay. So I'm going to go in, paste that link, which goes to my dashboard and then save. Now, of course, if you want to add more rules, you can go in here, choose the user role. So you can, it just depends your usual role, what you need to add here and then add others. But this is going to be my default login URL. Hit save and pretty much we are good to go. So when people now log into the website, so when your client logs into the website, this is the page they get. It's much simpler. And of course you can make this as complex as you want. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Take care.